Like we said in our first video of Friendly Fire, you can't turn it off in real life and it thrived in World War II, in which identification and positional errors were commonplace and only exacerbated by poor comms, poor training and sketchy environments. If you haven't watched that first video, it's worth giving it a quick one-two before starting this video, as we go into causes and stats a bit more in the first. For the rest of you, hide under your desk or something, because we're about to call an aerial bombardment down on our heads and reveal 13 more shocking instances of friendly fire in the Second World War. Italo Balbo served as Italy's Marshal of the Air Force, Governor General of Libya, and Commander-in-Chief of Italian North Africa during the Second World War, and he would have replaced Mussolini if he didn't become a casualty of friendly fire on the 28th of June 1940. A passenger on a Savoia Marchetti SM-79 medium bomber, Balbo was en route to an Italian airfield in Tobruk, Libya, which had recently been attacked by the British. Mistaking Balbo's SM-79 for another British plane, the anti-aircraft batteries defending the airfield fired, killing Balbo and everyone else on board. Born as Spreewald, renamed Anubis and renamed Spreewald once more in 1939, the German passenger carrying freighter by that name disguised herself as a British ship to approach Bordeaux, France in January 1942. On the 31st of January, she was mistaken by German U-boat Captain Lieutenant Peter Erich Klima as who would have thought a British ship, and Klima's submarine U-333 shot two torpedoes at her, sending her up in a blaze and opening her guts to the sea. A search for survivors was launched, but this mistake resulted in the loss of German crewmen and Allied Navy POWs alike, with a total of 72 perishing. The Capitaine Lieutenant was court-martialed, but found not guilty. Maybe we're bending the rules with this one, but I think it deserves at least a dishonorable mention. On the 13th of April 1942, Hawker Hurricanes and Supermarine Spitfires of the RAF were showing off in a demonstration of tactical air power in the now uninhabited village of Imber within British training grounds in England, when one of the Hurricanes mistook the spectators for target dummies and laid waste to them, killing 25 military personnel wounding 71 and doing the enemy a massive favor. The 21-year-old pilot claims the weather contributed to his error of judgment and he went on to fly in the war, only to get shot down over France in June that same year. Antonio Uso di Mari was an Italian Navigatori class destroyer which served in the Regia Marina during the Second World War and her life was cut short by another vessel of the Regia Marina, the Adua class submarine, Amba Alagi on the 8th of June 1942. Under the command of Captain Sergio Pochino, the Alagi loosed three torpedoes at a friendly naval column en route from Naples to Tripoli, thinking them the enemy. One torpedo hit the Antonioto Usadamari, sinking her and ending the lives of 141 of her 300-ish crewmen. In 1941, the British merchant ship Speybank was captured by the Germans, converted into a mine layer and blockade runner, and renamed the Doggerbank. Serving in the Kriegsmarine, the Doggerbank was en route to France on the 10th of January 1943, when, mistaken for the British ship she used to be, was torpedoed by a German U-boat and torn open to the Atlantic, taking all but a few of her crew of 365 men to the ocean floor with her. Those who survived the initial blast and the vessel's sinking slowly died or killed themselves on an unaptly named Jolly Boat soon after, with but one sailor coming away from the ordeal with his life. Operation Cobra was an Allied offensive launched shortly after the D-Day landings, with the aim of smashing through German defences and advancing to the region of Breton in France. Cobra commenced with an aerial bombardment on the 24th of July 1944, though cloudy conditions impacted visibility and some of the 1600 Allied aircraft spearheading Operation Cobra from the sky dropped their payloads on American ground units, killing 25 men and wounding a further 130. Some troops started firing on their own aircraft at this point, 
but their message must have somehow been misinterpreted. For the next day, when the clouds were gone and the sun was shining, Allied aircraft dropped bombs on more Allied troops, killing a further 111 men and wounding 490, blaming it on deflection errors and dust and smoke. The Royal Navy S-Class submarine HMS Sunfish was launched in 1936 and served in the Second World War, and in 1944 she was transferred to the Soviet Navy in which she didn't last long at all. On the 27th of July 1944, while en route to Murmansk, Russia, she was intercepted by an RAF Coastal Command B-24 Liberator and, you guessed it, bombed. All of her crewmen, which included some British liaison staff, perished in this friendly fire attack, and the Liberator's air crew was actually found to be responsible for the attack. Having ignored unmistakable signs that the sub was friendly and not fired recognition signals themselves. Great way to boost Anglo-Soviet relations. Born in Scotland and sold and resold until she ended up in Japanese hands, Junyo Maru was a cargo ship which transported Allied POWs during the war. A hell ship. On the 18th of September 1944, she was bound for Sumatra and packed with more than 1,450 Allied prisoners of war and 4,200 Japanese slave laborers. Enter the HMS Tradewind, a British submarine commanded by a British officer who had no idea the Allied POWs were on board. As you might have guessed, he put the Junyo Maru along with more than 5,600 souls under the waves, and those who were rescued were rescued by the Japanese and forced to work on the Burma Railway, which was pretty much a death sentence in itself. Launched on the first day of 1945, Operation Bordenplatte was the Luftwaffe's last major offensive in the war. The plan was to gain air superiority in the Battle of the Bulge to free up the Heer and the Waffen SS, though it didn't go according to plan, and bad weather was much to blame. While en route to the Allied airfields, the pilots were flying over some of the most heavily defended parts of German-occupied Europe, and they hadn't really thought to forewarn them about the operation. As a result, German anti-aircraft batteries, reinforced by the Allies, made a complete mess of the Luftwaffe, destroying a total of 300 German aircraft and killing 237 pilots in just one day. In the final days of the war in Europe, hundreds of thousands of Allied POWs were forced to march out of German POW camps and westward across the continent. These marches were known collectively as the Long Walk, the Black March, and the Death March across Germany, among other names, and the lack of food and sanitation and the biting winter were just a few of the threats these unfortunate souls were faced with. Another was Allied air attacks, in which pilots mistook the marching POWs for marching Germans. On the 19th of April 1945, in a village in Germany called Klesse, Allied POWs were strafed by RAF Hawker Typhoons, which killed 30 and gravely wounded 30 more. But it's likely this sort of thing happened on more occasions than one. The SS Cap Arcona was a German ocean liner employed by the Kriegsmarine in 1942 for a variety of purposes during the Second World War, including as a set in a German propaganda film called Titanic, as an evacuation ship and as a prison ship. In May 1945, she was packed full of POWs from Nazi concentration camps when she and the other vessels she was traveling with were attacked by Hawker Typhoons of the RAF. While the German guards were mostly above deck, the POWs were below it, suffering in the dark, and only 350 of the 5,000 POWs on the Cap Arcona, who were from over 30 different nationalities, managed to survive the initial blasts and the sinking of the ship. In comparison, more than 400 SS personnel who were aboard the Cap Arcona were rescued by German trawlers. While the scale is something else entirely, it's worth mentioning that at least 15 Allied POWs died in the nuclear bombing of Nagasaki at the end of the war, including 8 British POWs and 7 Dutch POWs. Other Allied POWs, such as American POW Cho Kiyumiya and 24 Australian POWs, survived the blast. Wolfgang Lüth is known for being the second most successful German U-boat captain of the Second World War, having sunk 46 merchant ships and one French sub in just 15 patrols. And this battle-hardened Kriegsmarine was the victim of a friendly fire incident on the night of the 13th of May 1945, after the war in Europe was over. Luth was stumbling back to Merwig Naval Academy after a night on the Turpentine when he was confronted by a young German guard with a gun. 
In his drunken stupor, Luth failed to tell the guard the password to enter the facility, and the guard hip-fired, shooting Luth dead and leaving his wife and four children without a husband and father. The young guard, 18 at the time, was not charged for this incident. So those were just another 13 examples of friendly fire in World War II, among thousands. But what do you think? Are there more examples that you want to share? Do you want to see another video about friendly fire but in different conflicts such as the Vietnam War and in World War I? Let us know in the comment section below. And just before you go guys, if you want to join our wider history community, make sure you check out all those links in the description below where you can join us on Discord and chat to myself and other history buffs and our Facebook and Instagram where you get access to exclusive content that you won't find on this channel. Anyways guys, as always, thank you so much for watching and I hope you learned something new.